All right, welcome back to a special edition of Real Reviews here from the Sundance Film Festival. And up next is the film uh, where a teenage Owen, Owen is just trying to make it through life in the suburbs when his classmate introduces him to a mysterious late night TV show, a vision of a supernatural world beneath their own. In the pale glow of the television, Owen's view of reality begins to crack, and I saw the TV glow. All right, Charles, let me let me take this one first, man. Um, this film stars uh, Justice Smith, who has two films in the festival, and we'll review uh, his other film, uh, The American Society of Magical Negroes, probably in a couple of days. But in this film, he plays a character. Uh, the way it's drawn, and, and, and let me back up for a second, because we got to give writer-director Jane Schoenbrunn, uh, who did We're All and We're All Going to the World's Fair, that was at the Sundance Film Festival two years ago, brings this film back in. And I will just say for the life of me, I'm not really sure what Jane's objective was for this film. Um, this story, as portrayed by Justice Smith, he plays a kid, as we see him at the beginning, who's very uh, introverted. He's very, very shy. He has mm. no interest, not really well, doesn't really connect well with anybody until he sees uh, a young girl reading a book. And help me with the name of this, the, this, this the story. The Pink Opaque. The Pink Opaque. The Pink Opaque. Thank you. And it becomes his obsession, right? Learning about this show that is like a children's show but it's like the like an edgy kind of an adult ish sort of show that's it's even hard to explain it's like these two girls who are really not friends and they're connected because they have superhero powers it's, it's very strange the way it's explained right but he becomes obsessed with this show to the point where he begins to even lie to his parents saying that he's going to sleepovers because he has to sneak away to this, this young girl's house to watch the show that airs at 1030 at night that his parents won't let him watch at home. All right. So the story sort of fast forwards. He's now, I guess they meet when she's in the ninth grade, he's in the seventh grade. The next thing you know, the story moves up a couple of years. He's in high school. He still has no interest. He still doesn't connect. She's sneaking him tapes to the show because his parents won't let him watch it. And it and, and this just goes on and on and on for like about 90 minutes, right? It, it, it delves into a second act where she wants to bounce. Apparently she's being abused at home. He doesn't want to go with her. It th This whole thing, as I sat there and watched it, I, I had a couple of my colleagues. So Charles was on one side of me. T.T. Stern Enzi, who we had on the show uh, earlier this week, is sitting to my left. And I'm just burning a hole in both of their heads or both of your guys' heads watching this thing because I was flabbergasted at like the level of not the nonsensical level, the level of none of it's connecting, the level of what was what was director thinking in actually, you know, like like what is everybody thinking? In this story, like what is Justice Smith thinking when he read the screenplay, agreeing, you know what, I'm going to do this film. What is she thinking as they're shooting this film with hundreds of people on the staff, you know, like production folks above, below the, the, the line of the camera. I mean, all of the folks that are working on this film. What is everybody thinking? It, it takes a it takes a lot of skill, Charles, a lot of skill to make a movie this bad. This bad. You you just can't stumble into bad like this. This is almost like a concerted effort. And Charles, I'm gonna let you, I'm not even gonna jump on your point. I'm gonna throw it to you. I saw the TV glow, man. Am I seeing things or are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? I, I I'm gonna say this, first of all. Um uh, when we this movie was bought by A24 even before it screened at the festival. So Whatever Jane Schoenbraun was attempting to do, she achieved because the film was purchased. Uh, but I'm flabbergasted just like you are at this film. 
I don't know. I it, it it's it's an exercise in journalism for me because I couldn't even. I it it's taken me this long to even conceive what I want to say about this film. That it's because there's there's no real plot. Uh, there's no real thing that you can latch on to as a story here. It it's just a series of random and nonsensical images thrown at us um where we're supposed i mean there's this there's this television show and then there's them watching the television show and sometimes they are in the television show and it's te- te- it, it it just it just uh, an amalgamation of Im- images randomly put together just to confuse us i think i left there there was a time when I said, okay, well, this is an, uh, uh, a cautionary tale in bad parenting um, or something. I don't know. I, when I finished watching the film, I don't know what I got out of seeing the film. It was truly one of those times when you say I've lost time that I can never get back. And, and okay. that's me being generous. Okay, I'm sorry. I need uh, uh, Travis Hopkins just passed me something. <laughs> I got to read this. TT, TT is over there. I got to read this. Somebody wrote, and I quote, David Ehrlich of IndieWire wrote, Sean Brun's astonishing second feature manages to retain the seductive fear of their micro-budget debut and deepening its thrilling wounds of discovery even while examining them at a much larger scale. I don't know David Ehrlich, but this is what I will tell you, sir. You, sir, are full of of, of the word I'm not going to use on my show. This movie literally is the definition. Have you ever heard the phrase, there's two hours that I'll never never get back? They should put this movie next to that description. The fact that this guy is so obsessed with this show, and then there's even a line that I I just burst out laughing when the the character goes, "Man, man, I got me a family of my own, and I love them more than anything else. And I went, how do you have a family? We don't see you do anything but watch this television show. And the fact that you just drop that in, like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're supposed to assume it. Charles, we never see this family. We never see any other interests of this character. For some reason, he's working, like, in a, uh, I guess, at, like, a movie theater or I, I don't know what it is. None of this stuff makes any sense. And to your point, there's no plot, the arc, there's nothing there. There's nothing to connect the story together. I told you guys, and I think before I even get to that, the funniest part of the film for me was the very end when I went to get up to move to leave and T.T. Stern Enzi was sitting next to me and the look on his face, I wish I could have took a picture of it. Because my brother looked like he was stunned. <laughs> and it, I, in that moment, TT was my spirit animal. I was like, that's exactly what I think about this film. Uh, the fact that A24, to your point, uh, bought this film and put it in the festival, I have no earthly idea what A24 is going to hope to gain with this film later this year. I'm assuming, I, I'm not sure you're going to try to put it in the awards race. I'm sure you might release it like in the spring or the summer. I have no idea what the audience will be for this film. And as I told both of you guys, I think in the 30 plus years that I've been a professional film critic, this is one of the five worst movies I've ever seen. Not just a festival movie. I'm talking about like a movie. It's like one of, it's a horrible, horrible movie. And Justice Smith, I promise you, in two years, when I, when we interview him for something, he's going to act like this movie never existed. I'm like, hey, man, you, you were it. Mm-mm. What are you talking about? That wasn't me. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> so, Charles, go ahead. I'm going to also say this. You you re- read one quote. There are a couple of uh, reviews out there where people are en- have enjoyed this film. And I... I question because uh, one of my good friends at Roger Ebert has uh, sent in a review of this film and he, and he leaps God's praise on it as well. I just don't understand what they're looking at and, and why they can say what they're saying and, and with a straight face. That's all. I, that's all I'm saying. I don't know. And, 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 I, and, I, and it, it boggles my mind. Right. And I was going to say, man, th- th- these are the things that I've learned over the years that, 
you know, I told you the other day, we were having a conversation about how I, I grade movies with my gut, right? And my gut never steers me wrong. And I've there have been plenty of times that I've had to stand alone while other people lavish praise on films that I just didn't agree with. They just didn't work for me. If I have to stand on the side of like, I think this movie is horrible, I'm standing there because I don't care how many reviews or how many people who I may even respect that might like this movie. It just, it literally did not work for me. And it probably didn't work as I was, as I was watch, people, watching people walk out. <laughs> it didn't work for a whole lot of people yesterday who watched that film and that screening. So Charles, what are you giving this thing for great? Because you already know where I'm at. Let, let, last thing I'm going to say, you know, there's times when you say it's not my kind of film because, you know, <laughs> it, it, it may work for some other people. Mm -hmm. This is not a film. This is not. It's, it's not my kind of film. It's not anybody's kind of film, really. I, I don't understand, and I, I, I hate to. I've never given out an F so uh, joyously in my life. This is this is an F for me. Yes. Well, I took Bottom the extraordinary the step of giving it an F minus because <laughs> I want to make sure that F is just not good. This is an F minus, man. This movie is bad, right? And if you tell me. Hey, Tim, like Travis is over here whispering, man, that people that really like this movie. It sucks to be you right now because uh, it is not a good movie, man. It's not a good Something movie. Something is wrong with your brain if you love this film. That's all I want to say. Now, we've talked that this film has distribution. Uh, they have not announced when they're going to, to see it. But out of an early precautionary warning, whenever they do release it, make sure you skip. I saw the TV glow. Because they'll be like, well, they should rename it, I've Watched My Money Go. That's what that film should go. Because if you spend money on that, I've Watched My Money <laughs> 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 All right. All right. So there you have it. I saw the TV glow, the first of Justice Smith's uh, two films that are at the festival. Can't wait to talk about his next one. And until next time, on behalf of Charles Kirkland, I'm Tim Gordon, and that is your real review. Thank you.